Welcome to this video on Slitlam examination. In this video, we are going to show you a very interesting finding which you normally would see in patients with inflammation in the eye. And let's try to find out what we are seeing. So this is a slit beam examination. This is the anterior part of the slit which you're seeing, which is falling on the surface, which is the epithelium. So you'd see there's nothing in the epithelium, but back there you see something happening over there. And this is the slit beam which is falling on the part of the endothelium. So this is actually the thickness of the cornea, which you're seeing. This is the epi this is the endothelium, and this is the epi this is the endothelium, and this is the epithelium over here. So, so there's something which is happening on the posterior surface of the epithelium. So these are dots which are present on the posterior surface of the uh, uh, endothelium. These are called keratic precipitates. So when light is falling from this surface, it is going on the surface of the iris. This is called oblique examination. When it comes back towards you and it's coming back towards the examiner, it illuminates the back surface of the cornea and this is called the retro illumination of the endothelium or the cornea which you're seeing and this is actually going to show you the character precipitates very nicely then let's go forward and see what we are finding over here so these are the keratic precipitate and this is the area of retro illumination in which you're seeing those keratic precipitates. So what is the important part of these keratic precipitates? Number one, they are not very big in size. If they were very big in size, they are called mutton fat KPs. If they were present like this, those will be more seen in granulomatous diseases. So those are called mutton fat KPs. So these are small to medium size KP. So there's mixture of small and medium size KPs and these are present diffusely all along the surface of the cornea. So all along the surface of the endothelium, you're seeing this. This is not something which is localized to the inferior part or which is present on only in one significant area. The other thing, suppose this was a patient with heterochromic uveitis. In those patients, there will be very fine, small, stellate KPs which you see and they'll be diffused through the cornea. Similarly, in pigment dispersion syndrome, you will see pigment particles present on the posterior surface of the cornea. So those are the three main differential diagnoses. And the fourth one is when you see corneal guttata, you will see those pigmented type of dots with these excrescences of the, uh, of the endothelium which you're seeing in those patients. So this is a patient who has actually got active anterior uveitis. So first, if you find KPs, I'm showing you, showing you these KPs on 40 times magnification. So you have an idea what you're seeing. And these are present on the endothelial surface. So this is a patient who's the next thing which you want to see is after KPs. So I'm trying to visualize Sometime in when capturing on video state lamp is difficult, but if you say these are cells in the anterior chamber, you shine the light from one side and then you make it shine on the surface of the iris and you're actually best able to see those cells in this dark area of the pupil, especially by the scatter of the light. So you reduce the light to three millimeters and then make it finer or broader according to how much you need, but you need to make it finer. If you cannot see any cells, then make it more finer, the beam, and try to identify any flare in these patients. Because whenever you have uveitis, you start off with flare, which is leaking of proteins, then you get cells, and then you get, well, after resolution, the cells absorb first, and then at the end, it is the fibrin, or sorry, the proteins which are absorbed, which is the flare. Fibrin is something which is fibrinogen, which is actually deposition of those proteins in the surface of the anterior chamber, which develops in very severe uveitis. So this is cells which are seeing. So this patient was a pseudophagic patient. You can see this. And the other finding which we are seeing in this patient is a capsular phimosis. The capsule of this patient seems to be thickened and it's the anterior aperture seems to be smaller in size because 
If this is the pupil which seems to be about 2 or 3 mm in size, the capsular opening in the IOL is even smaller than that. That shows you that this patient has got anterior capsular phimosis. Typically that would happen in patients with anterior uveitis whenever you do cataract surgery. And if you put hydrophobic IULs, you tend to do larger um, uh, CCC in order to prevent that. But the main problem with uveitic patients is they have posterior synechy and they have difficult dilation of the pupil. So I would tend to use iris hooks to dilate these pupils of these patients. The other thing which is also visible in this patient is a bit of posterior capsular thickening. Let's see. This is an area which we which I think I'm seeing Elschnick pearls over here in this area of the posterior capsule. So you're seeing that in this patient as well. So the patient has got anterior uveitis along with presence of keratic precipitates. There is presence of anterior capsular phimosis and posterior capsular thickening in this patient. So slit lamp examination in detail would give you all these findings which you need to pick up. So thank you very much for watching.